Hi there, D.W. Berman here with uh, Liberty3D.com. Uh, fellow Liberty3D.com citizen Kevin Phillips made this little video for YouTube called uh, Creating Metablob Animation with Morphs. Um, one of the main features of... Or one of the main reasons he used morphs to get this look was to uh, give him the possibility of controlling the animation directly and also the ability to make it looping directly. And uh, I thought it'd be interesting to do this using uh, flocking. Now we won't get the looping ability, but it gives us a, it's a quick way of getting us a uh, interesting looking blob if you don't need it to be looping. So this would be useful for motion graphics for, as an element or maybe a, a screen element on a science fiction show or something. So here's my little flocking blob animation. This is just a uh, quick preview in VPR. You can see if I pause it, we can see it with smooth edges. So um, let me just copy this setting here, and uh, I'll get rid of my objects. No, don't create motion key. <sighs> okay, so here's my scene. I have null, which I don't need, and the new flock, which I'm getting rid of, and the director I'm getting rid of. So we're just going to start from scratch. Okay, in Lightwave 11 there's an Effects Tools tab. You can click on that and that gives us our Effects Tools options over here on the left. Click on Flocking and I'm gonna add a new generator and I'm gonna add a new goal. And for the Flock Generator I'm going to change this to a sphere and I'm just gonna do 15 and I'm going to change the size to 5 meters by 5 meters by 5 meters. And if I change my view here, you can see there's my generator. This big pink ball is the generator shape. Um, that's where all the flock comes out of. And if I click on Calculate Motions, you'll see I get a whole bunch of things in the middle. Let me go back to frame 0. And there we have our 15 little flocking elements. Um, every time you make a change in in uh, flocking you need to calculate all motions. Now by default this comes in as generic and as you saw they all just kinda huddle together in the middle and that's not helpful for what we need. We need them to spread out a bit. So what happens if I change the range to 1 and then calculate motions, they all kind of cram together again. So luckily there are a lot of preset behaviors and we have a few. We have swarm we can try. That's like a swarm of insects flying around. That doesn't work for what I want. We have flock, which kind of works for what we want, but it's big and uh, when I tried adjusting it, it just didn't work the way I needed it to. Uh, the one I found that works best for this right out of the gate is school. So if I calculate motions, you see there I have a nice little school of particles flying around there. Now that's all well and good, but when we hit render, we're not going to see anything. So uh, as evidenced by turning on VPR, you see we don't see anything. Um, and I'll switch the camera view. So there's our blobs. And from here on out, I think I'll just do this. OK. Um, with, that oh, doesn't need anything specific selected. So let's just go to our hypervoxels panel. And I'm going to click on the new flock and hit activate. And since I already copied all of my settings before, I'll hit paste. And yep, it remembered them. OK. Now, you're likely to see something that looks like this. You'll need to uh, scale up the particle size. And I got the uh, particle, the look, the shading look here, pretty much by copying Kevin's uh, tutorial. So you can just look at his tutorial to, to get this look. Um, or you can play with your surface settings to change it however you want. 
Um, he also turned up the or turned down the blend scale because by default it's at 100. So uh, you basically you'll want to play with the particle size, which is the size of the hypervoxel, and the blending, which is the way it just changed the the way they blend together. And uh, Kevin also has a pretty good uh, video on showing the different ways it blends together, so you can look at that video. So that's pretty much it. Um, this one, you don't have to... Uh, you don't have to pre-calculate anything to change the look of your hypervoxels. Um, so yeah, here's my little swirly blobby thing. Now, um, one thing you might not like about this is the way the whole thing kind of moves back and forth. Um, kind of en masse. It just uh, doesn't stay centered sometimes. But uh, yeah, that's just something to play with. This was just a quick experiment and some something to do for fun. So yeah, there's that. Uh, again, Kevin's tutorials on YouTube. Um, go to there. Subscribe to my channel because I'll be posting videos uh, something to do with graphics uh, on a weekly basis for the most part. I might miss a week here and there, but I'm trying to get a new video out every week. Uh, you also find Kevin and I have some products at liberty3d.com you can buy. Uh, more in-depth tutorials. Um, and yeah, so thanks for watching and have a great week.